Welcome back, friends, to Eat, Read, Sleep. My name is Kalina. I'm Tapas. And we are here today to vibe with books. Uh, we have a really special episode for you today. We're going to be talking about influencing, but not the typical type of influencing that you guys typically uh, think about. We're, we're not social media influencing mm -hmm. or anything like that. We're talking about influencing by way of collaborating and working together and really just uh, achieving a desired outcome that both parties win at, mm -hmm. which we may or may not see in, in our ever-changing crazy world. And to help us with that today, we actually have a very special guest. He's an author, a speaker, a master influencer himself. Um, he's the one and only... Bob Berg. Bob Berg. He is the author um, of the Go Giver series, um, and we're going to be digging into the Go Giver Influencer, the last and most recent book that he wrote with um, author David John David Mann, excuse me. Um, and we'll be kind of diving into that. So, thank you for joining us today. It was a great talk. So, stay tuned for that, guys. Okay. Well, let's get to it. Um, Bob, thank you so much for being on here with Eat, Read, Sleep with us today. How are you doing? Oh, doing great. It's my pleasure to be here. Thanks for having me. Great, great. So before we dig into your books, the Go Giver series, we really wanted to take a moment kind of to highlight you so our audience um, can get a little bit of your background. So for over 30 years, you've worked with entrepreneurs, you've worked with um, leaders and sales, sales professionals, showing them how to communicate and how to find their value and how to successfully grow. Uh, the American Management Association actually named you one of the 30 most influential leaders. And you are also one of the top 200 most influential influential authors in the world by Rich Topia. Um, you also co-wrote The Go-Giver with John David Mann. And with that, you became an author of a book that was rated one of the top 10 most motivational books ever written. Um, that book sold over a million copies. It was translated into over 30 languages. And since then, you've expanded that Go-Giver series. Um, I know in addition to that, you're also an animal lover. Uh, is there anything else? I mean, that's a huge, impressive resume right there. Is there anything else you'd like to share that we should know about you? Yeah, not really. That I you did a great job. You did some great research there. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> we we do our, our due diligence over here. So um, your series was actually introduced to us by a really good friend of ours, Ryan, over at Jux Books. Um, and both Tapas and I actually really gravitated towards um, your influential book, the, the most recent one, The Go-Giver Influencer, um, especially with the line of work that we do. Yep. Uh, but before we dig into that particular installment, I think that it's really critical that we give our audience the overall highlight of Go-Giver in general, kind of uh, what you call the stratospheric success. Can you kind of expand on that and talk to us about why that's really important? Yeah, you know, really, it's it's all about understanding that shifting your focus, and this is really where it all begins, shifting your focus uh, from getting to giving. And when we say giving in this context, we simply mean constantly and consistently providing immense value to others. Understanding that doing so is not only a a more fulfilling way of conducting business, it's actually the most financially profitable way as well. And not for any kind of way out there, woo woo, magical, mystical kind of reason. Oh, just be nice. Uh, no, not really. It's it's very actually concrete. It's very rational, very logical. When you're that person who is able to take your focus off of yourself and place it on serving others, discovering what they need, what they want, what they desire. When you can move off of yourself and focus on helping other prop people, helping the marketplace um, overcome and solve their challenges and their problems. When you can move off of yourself and place the focus on moving other people closer toward to happiness, people feel good about you. They feel yeah. great about you, right? They want to get to know you. They like you. They trust you. They they want to be in relationship with you. They want to uh, do business with you directly, but they want to tell others about you. They want to be your personal walking ambassador. So that's you know that's really the the overriding premise of the Go Giver. It makes a lot of sense, um, and I I feel like not a lot of people understand that though. In your years of um educating on this have you seen maybe like one root similar cause that is the major roadblock for most people well i mean i, I think there were a couple of different situations that that come up one is 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 that person 
who has been brought up with the culture of, you know, it's dog eat dog, the only way you can, uh, and as an animal lover, I hate that saying, but that's kind of what they, you know, say. And it's, you know, you've got to get that person before they get you and this and that. And this is, you know, this, this happens because it's what you see. It's what you hear growing up that business people are ruthless and horrible and terrible. And then you watch TV shows. And when I was a kid, uh, Dallas was the big show where J.R. Ewing was the evil capitalist to just step on your toes in order to, right? Uh, and then you see it in every movie, right? Where the good people are poor and struggling and stepped on, stepped over, stepped around, pushed down by who? The evil rich people. And and so so I think people kind of grow up with that belief system. Now, don't get me wrong. There's plenty of people in this world who make a lot of money doing things in a way we would not like. But basically, if you look at most people, especially, especially to the degree that they operate within a free market system, meaning that no one is forced to do business with them, okay? The only way they can earn a whole lot of money is to provide a whole lot of value to a whole lot of people. So again, that's not intuitive until you think about it. But once you start thinking about it, it becomes a lot, you know, a lot easier to understand. I, you know, I often, when I speak at sales conferences, the first thing I say is nobody's going to buy from you because you have a quota to meet, right? They're not going to buy from you because you need the money or even because you're a really nice guy, nice gal. No, they're going to buy from you because they believe they'll be better off by doing so than by not doing so. And see, that's actually great for that person who has a heart for serving others, who has a product or service they believe in and who knows that, that they can bring immense value to another human being through understanding that person's needs, wants, and desires. So, so, uh, so for the first you know, part, it's a matter for that first type who, who doesn't kind of naturally uh, get the go-giver way, that's the issue, okay? And that's just a matter of educating as to why it's actually in their best interest to be a go-giver instead of a go-taker, right? Yeah. So, but the second person is the one who has a heart for service, who loves to give value, who loves to make a difference in the world, but they resist the receiving part. They push that away. And this, again, goes back to those same emotional viewpoints, that, that belief system about money, right? That money, prosperity, business, all of that's evil stuff, right? So if I'm earning a lot of money, I, I must have done something wrong to get it, right? Or I mm. can't be a good person if I have a lot of money. You have a lot of people in the healing arts who who kind of have that that challenge with with being able to receive. So So there's really two types. And so I, I think it's a matter of, again, educating people uh, as to why there is no dichotomy in, and not only is there no dichotomy in terms of that you can do good for, do well for people and do good or do good and do well, but it's basically for most people, the only way they're going to make a lot of money is by focusing on providing value to others. And that when you do that, you have earned the right, not the entitlement, the right to receive. You know, I think um, in your book that we read, the influencer book, um, you kind of highlight that really well because you can see the internal struggle that one of the characters has between right. going to his dad. And his dad's like, no, you need to be a shark. You need to put your hand in, you need to gain control. And then you have the mentor who's like, no, let, let's let's work. Let's breathe. Let's take let's you know work together to make sure we have a good outcome. I love that you portray that because I think a lot of times we are so just used to like you need to have the upper hand. You need no matter what happens, especially in our old job, I think, you know, as leaders, we felt like, okay, we need to be the, the best and the in smartest control in control of everything. And I think that was really well highlighted because that, that was something I, I know I went through when I was um, developing. I was like, okay, should I be more aggressive? Should I take control or should I work with this person and see what's the best outcome? So I'm glad that you highlighted that because that's very prominent nowadays. Thank you. Yeah, we see a lot of kind of like the idea of like the, the nice guy finishes last mm -hmm. kind of mentality. So you almost have to be a shark in this big corporate world. Right. And you're preaching the absolute opposite. It does not have to be that way. And in fact, you can win and actually win the right way with lasting outcomes. Right. Doing yeah. Way. yeah. And the big companies, you know, that's not just for entrepreneurs, the big companies mm -hmm. who are 
embrace that, whose leadership embraces that, they are the most profitable companies. Yep. And, and uh, you know, you think with it, with all the information out there, uh, you know, our book is one of many, many, many books that that kind of preach that. You know, there's, but there's there's people from you know who've led big, huge companies such as Bob Chapman who wrote. Uh, uh, everybody matters. He, you know, he's the chairman and CEO of Barry Waymiller, which is a, a, um, a multinational, uh, consumer goods, uh, company manufacturing company with tens of thousands of employees. And, you know, he talks in his book about making that shift from that, you know, that just bottom line focused person in the nineties when he first started and you know, they were successful, but they had a lot of downs as well as ups and downs. They really didn't have a loyal team. They just had people who everybody was out for themselves. And it was always to then really kind of having an epiphany about understanding that his people were human beings and mm -hmm. that he needed to embrace that. He wanted to embrace that. And he has a company now that I mean, just, it's a wonderful functioning, company and it's a very very profitable company and you know they've been through two of the big downturns and they've come up smelling like roses and it's because they had a team you know they had people who understood that they cared about them yeah so i what i wanted to really ask you is we picked up influencer out of the entire series that was the one that we're like let's let's pick this one up first because we felt like I think I was expecting something else. It was more of like, how do we influence? How do we um, almost that that um, typical way that people think of when they think of the word influence, almost like manipulating or convincing someone to buy into something that you have. But your idea of it is really more of a persuasion in terms of working together and collaboratively versus um, what I was talking about. And it's more of painting this win-win situation versus a win-lose or a lose-lose situation where you're having to compromise a little bit of something. Um, so that was very enlightening because I haven't actually really thought of influencing um, in a positive way. And you kind of spun it like that. Yeah, so we would say that there are two ways to to in two different types of influence. So first, if we if we just look at the word influence on a very, very basic level, influence can be defined as simply the ability to move a person or persons to a desired action, usually within the context of a specific goal. That's its definition. Now, it's its definition. It's not really its essence. The, the, the essence of influence is pull, pull as opposed to push, as in the old saying, how far can you push a rope? And the answer is not very far, at least not very fast or very effectively. And that's why great influencers um, don't push, right? They don't push themselves and others. They don't push their will on others. They don't push their ideas on others. They're not pushy, right? You never hear will say, wow, that Dave or that Jennifer, she is so influential. She has a lot of push with people. No, she's influential. She has a lot of pull with people. That's what influence really is. It's pull. It's an attraction. Great influencers attract people first to themselves and only then to their ideas. And they do this again, not through push, which is compliance, manipulation, threat, you know, uh, they do it through through pull and attraction, which is uh, which is earning people's buy in. Now, how do they do that? How does that pull manifest itself? Well, it happens because the the influencer knows that. Well, I'd say that what Dale Carnegie wrote in his 1937 classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People, what I believe was the underlying premise of Carnegie's book is where he wrote ultimately people do things for their reasons, not our reasons. Okay. Um, and so the great influencer knows that because of this, they must focus on that other person. Now, I believe we need to be inwardly motivated, but outwardly focused. So the great influencer, the genuine influencer, asks themselves questions such as, how does what I want this other person to do how does it align with their goals, with their needs, their wants, their desires? How does, uh, you know, how does it align with their values? How does what I'm asking this person to do, um, 
how does it make their life better? How does it solve a problem for them? How does it help them get to where they want to go? You know, how do I tie in what I want with what the other person wants? And when we ask ourselves these questions thoughtfully, intelligently, um, genuinely, um, authentically, not as a way to manipulate another human being into doing our will, but as a way of building everyone in the process, now we've come a lot closer to earning that person's uh, commitment. And as one of my great friends, she's a, a wonderful leadership authority. Her name is Dondi Skumachi. As, as she says, compliance will never take you where commitment can go. I like that, bro. Yeah. Um, I just had a thought as you were saying that because you're talking about how do you get people to, you know, you're thinking about the other person and how to gain almost their trust, almost their commitment, sure. their trust. Absolutely. Sure. Um, the trust way that you part. wrote your series really embodies that because it's very um, atypical to the common how to leadership motivational books that we see. It's almost written fiction like where you have this parable and you have these stories and it really captivates the audience because I you know we read a lot of leadership books um, and I was kind of almost expecting the like how to one two three four five but you created this great storytelling that is so captivating and it made me really recall and remember a lot of the um, lessons that your characters went through and you had great character build up and it was very engaging and it influenced me to want to really take all of what you had to say and apply it to my everyday versus I think with some of the other books, which I think they're still great methods. It's just um, every person has to find the book that gravitates towards them. And I'm, I'm a huge fiction reader. I love storytelling. So a lot of books that are just straight bullet points, it's harder for me to engage with and kind of buy in. Um, so I, I really loved that. How did you and John come up with this concept to write a book in this manner? Sure. Well, first, understand that John was the, he's the genius writer. He He's the lead writer. Okay. I'm a how-to guy. I'm step one, step two, step three. <laughs> Every book I've ever written before my collaborations with John were how-to, and the books I've written since have been how-to. John is just a magnificent writer and storyteller. So, um, you know, when we came up with these ideas, it was, it was really about putting it into a, a story form because we wanted to make them so that they were short, they were easy to digest. They were readable. Um, and I think, you know, we all know that stories connect with people on a, a much deeper level than how-to books. And I've read thousands of how-to books. And again, I've written how-to, but I believe in how-to, absolutely. But we know that, you know, stories connect from the heart. Uh, there's an old saying from the sages that that words that come from the heart enter the heart. And I, I know when I've whenever I've read parables, because I love reading business parables, um, I always feel a connection with the author, with the story, with the characters. And so we decided to do it that way. And again, based, you know, based on John's talent, we were able to pull that off. But yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Were, were you, your characteristics applied into any of the characters in the books? Yeah, you know, we managed to do that. And, and, and especially in the first book, in, in the original Go-Giver book, uh, you know, most of the characters, not all, but most were either based on, on people we knew or they were, what's the right word, uh, a compendium of people we knew, you know. Uh, then you had someone like Joe in the first story who was just the every person, the every everyday Joe or Josephine. Just, you know, we've all been in that situation where we were kind of starting out, had potential, knew stuff, but thought we knew a lot more than we did and we're struggling and not reaching our potential. And hopefully a mentor was there to help us, you know, mm -hmm. navigate it. So that, you know, Joe was everyone. Uh, but yeah, we, we took characters and, and, you know, John and I put ourselves into the, into, you know, different characters in the story to at least parts of us. So it was just, you know, it was a, it was just a fun experience. Yeah. I think that's really important because, um, as what I connected with me a lot too, is a lot of the other self-help and leadership books are just like, Oh, Google does this, Apple does that. But then as an everyday person, you're like, I can't really relate necessarily to what Google or Apple does because we may not work with that company. But having characters like this that are so real and it, it creates a connection. So you can kind of see yourself in that form. Like, okay, I, I am this person. I can see myself struggling with this back and forth. And that was really cool to see. So uh, in, in writing with with John, um, 
how was that like? You know, I know you you authored a lot of books before that, but working with somebody to write a book, how was the experience? Was it was, you, was there a lot of back and forth, or were you pretty much just very you know um, like a well working old machine? How was that yeah, like? well, it, see, in this case, it was very easy for me because John is such a great writer. It's not as though I'm going to write anything that's going to be comparable to his mm. his words, right? So we would go over you know what we wanted a certain. Uh, person to be about you know we talk about a certain law uh some were taken from source material of books i've written others from things he's written you know and just he'd write a scene and then we go back and forth and just like go through every line every you know word every syllable what did this mean how could this be inter you know and really did that but you know but but it was very easy because he was the guy who wrote the scene you know and so uh so no um, challenges or obstacles. You guys butt heads on anything. Not <laughs> really. I mean, I, I mean, I think like anything else, there's times that you that you know you want to go one direction and one direction. But now nah, we had so much respect for each other that we, you know, anything that the other person really didn't want in there, we just didn't, we just didn't include. Yeah, you used your influence, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <There you go. laughs> Um, I did want to ask, in today's ever-changing world, I know you wrote uh, Go-Giver Influencer. I think that came out in 2018 or 19, right? Um, so much has changed since then. You know, we've seen a pandemic. We've seen um, a whole generation, that woke generation, that are responding differently to, to work and pressure cultures. We've also seen AI and kind of just the rise of social media in general. Um, really fast-paced. Do you... With everything in the past three years, are there any thoughts or any edits that you would look back and think, hmm, maybe the influencer needs to be edited to add this concept or this idea? Anything that, that has risen for you? Um, not not really. And I and I think the reason is this is because what what John and I really wrote about were core principles. And principles never change. You know, I mean, gravity is always going to work as gravity, where, you know, as far as we can tell, I, yeah, but it, it should, <laughs> you know, and, um, and so, you know, certain principles, uh, elements of human nature don't change. They haven't since time immemorial, they won't. So when you look at various laws, laws of human nature, laws of physical nature, laws of economic nature, that doesn't change. You know, one of the things I've said for 30 years is that all things being equal, people will do business with and refer business to those people they know, like, and trust. What I don't say is they'll do business with and refer business to those computers they know, like, and trust. Yeah. It's never the computer that they're doing business with or the social media platform. It's the person at the computer who's building the relationship. And the way we build those know, like, and trust relationships uh, the the you know the methodologies change because there's various media now to to do that but it's still the same thing it's still a matter of asking yourself how do i add value to this person's life yeah. you know is there anyone that you would not recommend your books to oh someone who would use them for for evil purposes sure mm -hmm. because you know and so this is where you get you know when we go back to influence and we gave the you know, and, and and we talked about the kind of two two types. You know, pull versus push. Well, part of push is is manipulation. Okay, so there's really two basic ways to influence to move a person to a certain idea or action. One is to persuade, which is positive, but the other is to manipulate, which is negative. Okay. Now remember, influence itself is like gravity. It's a principle. It's it's neither good nor bad. It just is how it's used can be good or can be evil. If you're persuading someone, which means you have their best interest at heart and you're trying to build everyone in the process, make it that win-win, well, that's a good thing. But if, if in terms of manipulation, if it's all about you getting just what you want with no concern about that other person, maybe not even meaning to hurt that person, but not caring if you do, if that's what it takes to get what you want, well, that's manipulation. That's a negative. You know, I often say there's nothing more dangerous than a bad person with good people skills. Mm -hmm. Okay. People skills are neutral. They just are. It's how they're used. So, yes, the type of person I would not want to read uh, the books are those people who would use the, the principles for negative means and ends. So not pro bono. 
I learned that from your book. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for the good. <laughs> yeah, for the good. For the good, right? Yeah. Um, so we would love to That's know uh, what's <laughs> what, what's what's next. Is there going to be a new um, addition to the Go Giver series coming out soon with John or? Well, so it, so it's interesting. We have we have four books. Three of them are parables. So the the Go Giver. Then there's Go Givers Sell More, which is the only one that's not a parable. That's more of a, a an application of the Go Giver. Then there was the Go Giver Leader. OK, and then the go giver influencer. Um, but John and his lovely wife, Anna, they actually co-authored a book in the series called The Go Giver Marriage. I saw that one. Yeah. So that's John's and Anna. And they were nice enough to ask me if I wanted to participate in it. But it was really their book. And um, and so I said, no, no, you guys go ahead. And and, uh, and I thought they did a, a wonderful job with that. And then so. coming out from 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 you. No, I, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah. Enjoying life, right? Huh? Yeah. Enjoying life. Yeah, there's been enough enough books. I, you know, you never know. I mean, things have, you know, if you, if there's an idea comes up for something, but I, I, I doubt there'll be any more in the, you know, in the Go Giver series. Got it. So, what do you spend most of your time on now? Oh, I love to to read. I actually love to eat and sleep too. So I'm kind of writing you all. Oh, there you go. Eat, read, sleep. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> but yeah, I'm an avid reader. You know, I, I love to read. And, what is your favorite book? Uh, favorite book of all time. It would be very, very difficult to to, to come up with because there's there's so many that I I love. You know, you you look at a book. You know, from 19 um, 1909, Peace, Power, and Plenty by Orson Sweat Arden. He was the, uh, many people call him the founder of the modern personal development movement. He was actually the founder of Success Magazine. And he wrote a number of books and essays. This to me is uh, one of my favorite of all time, Peace, Power, and Plenty. And it's it's one of the original versions, so I wouldn't even write in the in the book. I just wrote everything on the sticky notes. Oh. Um, but there's like just gems on practically every page. And when you think about it, you know, peace, power, and plenty. Peace, that inner peace, which is what we want. Power, not over others, but over ourselves and over our own inclinations and emotions and so forth. And then there's plenty, which is abundance, physical abundance, which is also an important part of life. And uh, so he combined them in these books with just such wonderful, immense information. So I'd say this is this has to be one of my all time favorites. Oh, I like that. Yeah. And, and what are you reading currently? What am I reading currently? So here's a book by a couple of friends of mine, uh, Richard Fenton and Andrea Waltz, wrote, who wrote When They Say No. And it's about uh, being able to reframe rejection. Uh, and they wrote, uh, they wrote a great parable years ago, soon after The Go-Giver came out, uh, called Go For No. It was a business parable. Um, and the, the subtitle was Yes is the Destination, No is How You Get There. And again, it was just reframing no and how to use that and or how to use the no's that you get in order for it to propel uh, your career. Uh, let's see. I just got uh, Tom Peter's latest book called Tom Peter. Oh, called um, Tom Peter's Compact Guide to Excellence, which is really great. I just read a book, just finished a book yesterday. Uh, I'm trying to look to see where it is, and I'm not seeing it. Uh, quite a collection there. <laughs> yeah. And so, yeah, I always say, you know, my my home is comprised of books with some scattered furniture. So, <laughs> I, like, I like I that. Like that. that. <laughs> I like that. Any uh, fiction books? So uh, there are some fiction books I enjoy. Now, it won't surprise you to hear that one of my favorite fiction writers is also John David Mann, my co-author. <laughs> So John wrote a series with Brandon Webb. Brandon was a Navy SEAL, uh, and they wrote a number of how-to books on leadership, uh, courage, just some great books. But then they got together to write a couple of um, novels. Uh, the first one was Steel Fear, which took place in a, a submarine about a, a serial killer in a, a naval submarine. Uh, not a not a submarine, a uh, ship, you know, a naval ship um, called Steel Fear. And then the follow-up to that was Cold Fear, which took place, followed the main protagonist, Finn, uh, 
who's a disgraced former Navy SEAL who was framed for something and he, you know, what have you. And then Cold Fear, which took place in, in uh, Iceland of all places. And it was, so the, those two books were great. Uh, there's also a series by a guy who writes, um, oh my goodness, I'm trying to think of his name right now and it's just not coming to me, but he writes a series of books uh, from uh, about a private eye and his dog. And it's written from the viewpoint of the dog. Oh, <laughs> there, yeah. I've read all 13, I think. And uh, I just, every time he comes out with a new one, boom, you know, I'm, I'm on. <laughs> oh, uh, I love that. Yeah. And uh, thank, go thank right ahead. Thank you for sharing that with us. Yeah. Like we, we really, it's great to, to get your perspective of the book, but then also to learn a, a little bit more about you too and your interests. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Well, we thank you for your time. We had a great time talking with you. Um, hope we look forward to, I know you said you're probably spending some downtime, but hopefully if there's any great things on the horizon, we'll definitely take a look at that. I so appreciate it. And I, I love what the two of you are doing. I just think it's, it's so fantastic. It's, uh, you know, it's adding a lot of value to the world. And I thank, thank you. We appreciate thank you. that. Thank you. Well, everyone, we've got Bob Berg and the Go Giver series. Go ahead and check those out. Thank you, Bob, so much. And thank you for everyone for listening. All right, guys. And that was the Go Giver Influencer with Bob Berg. We hope you had a great time talking with him and not just learning about the books, but learning about himself and his recommended books. Um, I thought those were all really great. We'll link everything in the comments below. Thank you for spending your time with us. We hope you have a great day. Continue reading and vibing with books, guys. Bye. Talk soon. Bye.